No one will come save you except you. A lot of times when we are feeling sad or depressed, we feel like if we just had that one thing we want, then we can be happy. We think that if we finally get the job we want or that person we desire or the shoes or the house or anything material in our external world, that that is when we will finally feel happy. We may hope someone will come into our lives to save us from our depression or unsatisfied life. We may even seek approval from other people and think that when we finally get that approval of, dang, you made it. You have a house, a respectable job that pays well, a nice family and a good spouse, that that is when you can finally feel happy. And although these things can bring you happiness, it's not true that it's the only thing that can bring you happiness. This might be how society conditioned us to think it's the only way to achieve happiness. From an early age, we are sent to school so we can get a good paying job and be an obedient worker, only to then feel frustrated with the payments we have to make. And even if you achieve some of the stuff I mentioned earlier, like a family, a house, a good spouse, you still may not feel fully satisfied yet. The bar just moves higher. And you might think, oh well, when I retire, then that's when I can finally feel happy. You see, true happiness doesn't come from external sources. It's actually something that we discover for ourselves. It's something you can actually give yourself right now. By looking inward and focusing on your strengths and virtues, you empower yourself to create lasting happiness. Not the short-term happiness, I'm talking about the kind that you say you will give yourself based on conditions you set for yourself. This means that you have to let go of the idea that something outside of you, whether it's material possessions or a person or external success, will bring you the fulfillment you seek. There are three kinds of happiness that you must consider and balance in your life. Each one of these three types of happiness contributes to your long-lasting well-being. It's only when you balance three, these three types of happiness that you can actually achieve true, authentic happiness. And in this video, we'll explore how you can achieve this balance for deeper fulfillment. You see, you have to hone in on your strengths and by honing in on your strengths, you can become a much happier person. Think of these strengths as tools or gifts. Some you may have been born with, others you may have developed over time. But the key is to recognize them as actual strengths that, if nurtured, can significantly enhance your happiness. I discovered this for myself thanks to a, an online survey that was recommended to me by the positive psychologist and author Martin Seligman. He's the author of Authentic Happiness. This survey helped me identify my top five greatest strengths and by focusing on them, I've become a much more peaceful and satisfied person. So stick around to the end of the video so I can tell you where you can find this link so that you can discover your top five greatest strengths. And if you focus on these strengths, I guarantee you this is what will make you happier. In addition to balancing the three types of happiness that we are going to get into right now. Authentic happiness isn't just fleeting pleasure or momentary joy. It's about long-term fulfillment, satisfaction, peace, and a sense of love for yourself and life. It's a balance of these three types of happiness. Number one, pleasure. Pleasure is the most easily accessible form of happiness. It's about the feel-good moments you get from things like eating your favorite meal, watching a movie, or playing a video game, or whatever it is that comes into your mind. Partying, a night out, drinking with friends, these experiences bring you joy in the short term, but it's important to understand that authentic happiness goes beyond these fleeting moments. While pleasure is enjoyable, it doesn't provide the lasting deep sense of fulfillment that leads to long-term happiness. Think about it. After a fun night out or after binge watching your favorite show, you're still left with your deeper life issues, right? True happiness requires more than just a string of pleasurable moments. However, pleasure does play a role in authentic happiness when it's balanced out by the other two forms of happiness, and it may even enhance these pleasures. And it's perfectly fine to enjoy these moments, but they shouldn't be the only focus of your life if you want happiness to last. And if you incorporate these next two types of happiness, you will most likely enjoy these pleasures way more. There is something that must come with pleasure and activities that give you joy, and that is engagement. This is about being fully absorbed in what you're doing, experiencing a state of flow, 
where time seems to fly by because you're so deeply involved in an activity. This is similar to what athletes go to when they're in the middle of a game, just fully focused in the moment. And this might sound familiar if you've kept up with some of my recent videos. That's because we've talked about presence before and how it can help with self-esteem and how it can help mitigate overthinking. This is because presence or engagement is at the core peaceful. And that's what you want out of happiness, right? Feeling at peace or a sense of okayness, or you may actually be desiring a sense of love. You can get all that through presence. At the end of the day, this engagement is what can contribute to you feeling happier. If you want to get better at feeling more engaged, or you want to know what types of activities can help you feel more engaged, consider the following techniques. Mindful activities. Choosing activities that require your full attention, such as painting, playing a musical instrument, or even cooking, set aside distractions and immerse yourself in the experience. The goal is to focus solely on the task at hand, allowing yourself to become fully present. Next up, we have setting up clear goals. When you approach an activity, set specific goals for what you want to achieve. This could be finishing a project at work or learning a new skill. Clear goals help direct your focus and provide a sense of purpose, making it easier to become engaged in the process. So think about what goals you have out of life. Some people are just going on through their life not even thinking about that, but when you have a clear sense of what the goals are, this can help you fulfill this authentic happiness. We also have limiting distractions. Create an environment that minimizes interruptions, turn off notifications on your phone, designate a quiet workspace, and let others know you need some time to concentrate. The less distracted you are, the more engaged you can be. For some people, it might be going to the gym, and while you're at the gym, you just want absolutely no distractions. You just wanna fully embrace that moment of lifting weights, or if you wanna go outside and kick a soccer ball, or if you wanna go outside and play a game of basketball, it's really distracting when you're pulling up your phone and checking to see what messages were sent to you or checking up to see your social media notifications. That takes you out of the moment. It might even bring up some uncomfortable things that are happening in your life that you just want some distraction from. We also have practicing gratitude. Before starting an engaging activity, take a moment to reflect on what you're grateful for. This mindset can elevate your mood and help you approach the task with a positive attitude, fostering a deeper connection to the activity. And finally, we have explore new interests. Sometimes engagement wanes because we fall into routines. We might get bored out of some things. So try exploring new hobbies or interests. Whether it's hiking, writing, or learning a new language, fresh experiences can reignite your passion and immerse you in the moment. So you now understand that part of authentic happiness requires balancing out pleasure and engagement. But you are still missing one key element in order to balance out the whole equation. Yeah, you're getting these momentary joys through pleasure and you are finding a sense of peace by engaging in different activities. But what does that mean for you? This is what number three is about, meaning. This form of happiness is about connecting to something bigger than yourself, whether that's through relationships, community, or pursuing goals that align with your values. It is pretty much about finding a purpose to why you do what you do. For example, in my case, I make these videos because I find meaning and purpose in helping out other people and helping them feel better about themselves. I find meaning and purpose in helping them understand themselves better. It also helps me understand myself better. I feel connected by discussing these topics with you all. And I feel at peace knowing that whoever watches these videos, it can help them become better versions of themselves. Better people with clearer states of mind can help create a better society. And this in turn can help create a better world that takes care of all of its people. You might discover your own life purpose or meaning out of the relationships you develop. You might be a teacher who wants to help educate the future of the world. You might be a mentor or a coach guiding young minds or a parent nurturing your children's growth. You can find this in a lot of different jobs out there. Think of firefighters helping the community to put out fires or a tailor helping people to look good in their clothes, which contributes to them feeling better about themselves with a good, healthy appearance. Each of these roles allows you to contribute positively to others' lives, creating a ripple effect that extends far beyond your immediate surroundings. 
Finding meaning in your relationships not only enriches your life, but also fosters a sense of belonging and connectedness. It's through these connections that we often learn about ourselves and what truly matters to us. So whether it's through friendships, family ties, or community involvement, investing in meaningful relationships can lead to a deeper understanding of your own purpose and enhance your overall happiness. As you engage with others, reflect on how these interactions align with your values and passions. By doing so, you'll uncover not just a sense of fulfillment for yourself, but also the ability to make a positive impact on the world around you. We're not done yet, even though you have an understanding now of the three types of happiness that you need in order to balance out and achieve authentic happiness, because you now need to understand how you can even do that. You also need to understand how you can even find different ways of discovering what gives you pleasure, what helps you feel engaged, and what helps you find meaning. You can discover what gives you pleasure, what helps you feel engaged, and what helps you find meaning by focusing on your strengths. For example, after I did my survey I mentioned earlier proposed by positive psychologist Martin Seligman, I discovered that one of my strengths was love of learning. By focusing on my love of learning, I found out that one way that I can use this strength to find pleasure, engagement, and meaning is by learning more about politics, psychology, society, spirituality, and making videos on YouTube to help others learn this material with me. I find pleasure out of reading and teaching. I also am engaged with you as the audience as well as with people in my personal life. And I find meaning through learning about the world and through teaching. Your strengths might be similar to mine or they might be different. It could be bravery and valor which can help with bring, being a firefighter or maybe you like speaking up for what's right. So maybe this might help you with being a good advocate in your community. Or your strength could be honesty, authenticity, and genuineness, which could help with counseling or helping people in other ways. By combining some of these strengths that you have, it can help you reach that authentic happiness. Martin Seligman's survey is part of the VIA Values in Action Survey of Character Strengths, which helps individuals identify their top character strengths. You can find the survey on the official VIA Institute on Character website. Please note that I'm not paid by them. I'm just recommending this because I found out about it when I was reading this book and it helped me out a lot. So here's how you can access it. Visit the VIA Institute on Character. So go to www.viacharacter.org. Take the survey by navigating to the Take the VIA Survey section where you can complete the survey for free. Now with the results, after you complete the survey, you'll receive a report detailing your top character strengths and insights into how to apply them into your life. I hope this video helps you find authentic happiness, but as you go on about your life, you might find that there are some times in which you find yourself overthinking. There are some ways, some steps that you can take in order to mitigate those ruminating thoughts, and you can watch that video right here. Thanks for watching.